Okay, this is Wednesday's video for Algebra 1. These are your solutions. Remember, you were taking two points and finding the slope from two points on any line. Okay, by using the change in y over change in x. If you find that you're getting these wrong, message me. Um, I'll look back through your work. Make sure you're sending me pictures of your work. That way I can help you if you are having trouble with these. Okay. Now go ahead and copy down what's here. Remember we reviewed last week over slope-intercept formula, and then there's another formula that comes up, the point-slope formula. So sometimes if you're given a problem where you have a point and you have a slope and they're asking you to write an equation for that line, you can, and you can use the point-slope formula. Just remember, if you have a point and a slope, you can use the point-slope formula. Okay, so Remember the way that it works. You're just going to plug in the numbers. This is this is an example right here. So if you have a line that passes through 0.41 and it has a slope of 2, you can write an equation for it by following the point-slope formula. So y minus y1, and we're going to use 1 as y1. So y minus 1 equals m, and they've already told us the slope is 2 times x minus x1, so x minus 4. So we used this as y1, and we used this as x1, okay? And we just plugged in the numbers. y minus y1 equals the slope m times x minus x1, Oop. okay? Now, you are going to need to use what we worked on last week Sorry, I'm going to move you down. Uh, you're going to need to use what we worked on last week to turn this into slope-intercept form. So if you look at it, let's use the distributive property first. So y minus 1 equals 2x minus 8. And then all we need to do to get y by itself is just add 1. So add 1 onto both sides. So we get y equals... 2x and negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. So 2x minus 7. Remember, I'm not adding that this isn't a, this isn't a 1x. This is just a 1. So I'm not adding it here. I'm adding it here. Okay, I have to add it where, with the like terms. Now I've got it in slope-intercept form, so I'm done. I could graph this line, and I'm not asking you to do that today. But we've taken the point and the slope, and we've turned it into slope-intercept form. Okay, so then we could identify a graph or graph the line. All right, pause. Okay, go ahead and uh, copy down these practice problems. And again, we're going to do, I left the point slope formula up here for you so that we can follow with it. And we're just going to do the same thing we did on the last one. So y minus y1, remember this is x1 and this is y1. Okay, so y minus y1 would be y minus 0. I'm going to go ahead and write it in there, but we can ignore it when we rewrite. Equals m times x minus x1. So the m, the slope is 2 thirds. So 2 thirds times x minus x1, which is literally going to be x minus negative 6. I'm going to write it out like that, and then I'll rewrite it. We can skip this step in the future, but I just want you to see it. Uh, when you have a negative here, since we're subtracting, subtracting a negative means addition because we've got x minus negative 6. So I'm going to rewrite that as x plus 6. And I'm going to go back and rewrite the whole thing. And I'm going to leave off this minus 0. I can ignore this. I don't need to, I don't need to factor that in. So it looks like I've almost already got it in slope-intercept form because the y is by itself, but I do need to use the distributive property here. So y equals two-thirds x, so two-thirds x, and then I need to multiply two-thirds times six. And I know you get, you can do this in your head, so think of this as six over one, 
And remember, you're just multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So this is 12 over 3. And you know that 12 over 3 is 4. So 2 thirds x plus 4. And now it's in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And so I'm going to put a box around that as my final answer. Okay, I do want your answers written in slope intercept form. Don't just leave them in point slope form. Okay, so let's do this next one. y minus y1. So we're looking at a negative 3 as y1, and I'm going to skip the step of writing it like this. I'm going to skip that because I think you can do this in your head. So y minus y1, since this is a negative 3, it's actually going to be y plus 3. Okay, equals m, which I'm using a negative 1 for m, times x minus x1, and this is just a 4, so we've got x minus 4. Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite. The first thing I need to take care of is that distributive property. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite y plus 3 equals negative 1x, and negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, so plus 4. All right? So if I look, so the last thing, the only thing I need to do now to get y by itself is to get rid of that positive 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 to get that to cancel out. So over here on this positive 4, I'm going to have to subtract 3. Oops, let me make it look like a 3. So let's rewrite it. We've got y equals, and I'm going to take off the 1 because remember the 1 needs to be invisible. So negative x and positive 4 minus 3 is just positive 1. So y equals negative x plus 1. I've got it in slope intercept form. So I'm going to go ahead and box it in as my final answer. Okay. Oops, pause. Okay, last two that we're going to do together. Go ahead and write these down. Okay, and if you look here, we've got a negative 12 and a negative 5. So our x1 and our y1 are both negative, so we're going to have to switch those to positives. So y minus y1 would be y minus negative 5, which I'm going to write as y plus 5 equals m, and I'm using one third for the slope times x minus x1. Now I've got a negative 12 here, so x minus negative 12 I'm going to write as x plus 12. Okay. Um, the first thing I need to take care of is the distributive property, so I'm going to rewrite this. I've got y plus 5, and I'm going to take care of this, distributing this one third. So one third times x is just one third x, and one third times 12 over 1. Do that in your head. 1 times 12 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3, so that's 4. So we've got plus 4. Now let's look at it. The only thing I need to do over here to get y by itself is to subtract this 5. So subtract 5 from here. So let's finish it up. We've got y equals 1 third x. Positive 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And if I look at it, it's in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to go ahead and box that in as my final answer. Okay, let's do one more. And look, we've got both our x1 and x2, or x1 and y1 are also negative, so I'm going to have to rewrite those as addition. So y minus y1, y minus negative 1 would be y plus 1. And then the slope, we're using negative 4 thirds times x minus negative 6, so x plus 6. Okay, let's rewrite it. The first thing I need to take care of is the distributive property, so y plus 1 equals negative 4 thirds times x, so negative 4 thirds x. Oops. Okay, so let's look at this. I'm thinking of this as a 6 over 1. We can do that multiplication in our head. So negative 4, remember the negative can be either on the 4 or the 3, but it, it's only on one of them. So let's do negative 4 times 6 would be negative 24. So negative 24 
over three times one is three. Negative 24 over three is negative eight. So right here, I'm gonna put negative minus eight. And I'm looking at it, I still have this uh, plus one that I need to get rid of, so I'm gonna subtract one here. And then let's finish it up. Y equals negative four thirds X. And don't forget I had subtracted one there. So negative eight minus one would be negative nine. So Y equals negative four thirds X minus nine. It's in slope intercept form and I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna give you some practice problems. Today is Wednesday, today's Wednesday. So if you would like credit for these, um, submit them by Thursday night. And then on Friday, I'm just gonna give you some more of these to practice. Okay, we'll go over the answers and then I'm gonna give you more problems like this to practice. Okay, I hope you have a great Wednesday. I miss you and I'll see you back for Friday's video.